Welcome back to our North American LCS Super Week action. Hey everyone, I'm David Freak Turley, taking over the caster's desk with Joshua Jat Leesman. I just saw that sign, you can't nerf balls from the stands. And you cannot, that guy's really good and he's gonna see him in this game against Mien in the top lane. Yeah, we'll see if yeah. we can take him down this one, of course. We're gonna check in with what you guys have been saying over on Twitter. Earlier today we asked you what North American LCS player will shine during Super Week and why. And the responses have come rolling in like Ramis at Deathwish says Aframu. He shines every week. Why should Super Week be any exception? Yeah, I mean, absolutely there with Aframu. He has been a solid performer every single week. Yeah. I, I don't really recall a week where we can say Aframu played bad. He kind of went from an inconsistent support when he started in Season 3 to one of the most reliable supports in the game. Yeah, and he makes up really half of one of the best bottom lanes in all of North America, I gotta yep. say. Great player overall. Next up, at Con Doublemint says, I believe it will be Bjergsen, since he is close to beating ManCloud's record for kills and has the most kills in the European and NALCS. Yeah, it's going to be a race, actually, between him and Sneaky. Sneaky did tie him in one of our earlier games in the day for most kills uh, in LCS, and it's going to need to be one of those standout weeks if he wants to get the kills lead in the NALCS. It'll be amazing because yeah. he missed six games. Yeah, and he, but he's still on pace even yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. Plus, Sneaky's played another further game so far. I haven't even seen TSM today. So next up, at Burning Aegis, as Cloud9 Sneaky will shine because he's showing how a true AD carry plays in this meta. Well, there you go. Pick Corky, apparently. Do yes. more magic damage than physical damage mm -hmm. by about 65% when we are looking yeah, at that Two game. to one. Yeah, but even so, Sneaky has been on point this entire year, and we get to see him in this game. Yeah, he's a great player of all. We'll see it uh, in just a few minutes. So thanks, of course, to everyone for the great tweets. We'd, of course, love to hear more. Remember to follow us at LOL Esports and use the hashtag LCS to join in on the conversation. Now for more on Curse's big win, let's send it over to Riven Kobe. Thank you very much, Freak. We have lane swapped, and we are now joined by Voiboy, and I will dominate. Gentlemen, congratulations on the win. Voi, start with you real quick. Right into champion select. Did you guys think that they were going to let you get Thresh right away? Uh, well, Bunny's been playing a phenomenal Thresh ever since he joined our team, and we honestly thought that there was a chance they could first pick it, but they actually first picked Elise, so that just left Thresh right open for Bunny. And if Thresh is open, Bunny's definitely going to want to play it. So that, that we, were, we were pretty happy about that. And yeah, I'm surprised how many games we've been getting Thresh. Because Bunny, every time he plays Thresh, he just does so well. And I would expect a lot more bans going out. But I think they banned like Annie and uh, yeah. LeBlanc and Lulu. That was so. weird to me, the Annie ban. Have you yeah. guys had some sort of secret Annie thing going on? Or? <laughs> Tell us, please. We might, we might. Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> it, it wouldn't be a secret yeah, if secret. I told you. <laughs> um, well, talking and they banned LeBlanc, the too, so I, I couldn't buy the movies. Uh. That's what they were after. <laughs> talking more about the bans, you guys kind of shifted the focus. I think that's why they first picked Elise, because you guys banned out all these junglers mm -hmm. and kind of made them think about, oh, my God, there's some crazy strategy here. Have you guys decided going into this game we're going to focus Nintendo, or was that just a... Uh, it was mainly because we view Kazakhs and Eve as, like, Pretty much the best junglers on this patch. Uh, Kazakhs obviously has the buff yeah. to his R, so he's got uh, so much damage reduction. He's just kind of like a monster. And Eve is just annoying to deal with the whole game because she's invisible. Uh, you start questioning a lot of stuff, like in dives and stuff. Like, oh, is she, is she there for the dive? Like, should uh -huh. we not dive this? Like, things like that. So we decided to go with um, a couple jungle bands and uh, just, like, go from there. So talking more about the jungle, the level one. Now, I saw you, as soon as I saw you pull your blue buff, down, away from the top side. I felt like you guys already knew that Lee Sin was in your jungle. What was going on with the early level one stuff? So we had a ward in our pixel brush that uh -huh. game, and he just walked straight through it and walked into our blue. So we're like, oh, what is he doing? Is he on white? Is he on wolves? So we uh, we checked our wolves, checked our white, and he wasn't there. So I was like, okay, I'll just start off the blue, but like stay around me. Like we, He might still be here. He might have just... Uh, uh, recalled, but we don't really know. So I was just calling for people to stay around me, and then we saw him like start contesting. And I'd already leveled E, so if I with W and E, you pretty much have like no uh -huh. kill potential. There's no way I can get on him or anything. But uh, I was trying to just tell people like, oh yeah, you can kill him, you can kill him, free kill. And then Void Void just like went hyphy for it. He's like, oh, I'm flashing the wall, like I'm I'm going in, and it was this beast. So. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to get into some replays here. Obviously, you had a great game. The first one we're going to touch on is the amazing team fight in the bottom lane at 21 minutes. We'll get that up on your screen. I believe this is the one we had to teleport in. What was the communication going in here? Because so, boy, it was a little far out. Yeah, right here I was calling. I'm going to push out an extra wave. I think I was pretty close to an item, and I was like, there's a chance they're rotating on me. So just have people moving. And once they showed, they, they came. We had cross TPN. I was just cutting around the creeps. Zyra basically wasted her ult. Uh, I think I ulted Zyra, just trying to pop her, and then my whole team just came in, and they were just really panicked. They didn't really know what to do. I cut it through a few people. Shifter popped the Zanyas, which delayed us a little bit, but we were just super strong right now. We were just able to chase them down, 
and we were this whole time we were trying to call to give a kill to, a kill to cop because he had so many <laughs> yeah. stacks of his Draven passive. And then right here when we were going for the final kill on Zion, we get him to like 10% HP. We're like, give it to cop, give it to him. And then there's like a little bit of a yeah. uh, kind of awkward lull while we're waiting. We're like, uh. Oh, so that's why. Funny we're like, we're gonna gonna kill. Kill. Right, just kill it, just kill it. All right, you got it. Thank God. And then Cog got like 900 gold off that kill, which was wow. really, really good. Yeah. Uh, what happened with the uh, Wiz Fusion there? Did you solo Wiz Fusion? Yeah, I 100 owed him. I had Elder Lizard on Vi, and he just, he was like in a bad position. And if you let like Vi get on 80k and there's no one peeling for him, it's just, it's disgusting. So that's, yeah. that's kind of what happened. So I was thinking, when you guys have this hard engage comp versus poke comp, you're like, you just need one window. After you killed him that first time, then you immediately went right back to him. After just that one team fight, did you guys feel confident or were you still really worried about the poke? Um, our mentality there was they just used a lot of flashes. So if they use a lot of flashes, that's kind of like the way that they would be disengaging. They're kind of just going to like mm -hmm. throw down his eye rolled and then just all kite back, try to just flash out and just kite out our engage. Um, so we knew that they had no way to really escape if we force a fight. So we were just calling like, oh, they have no flashes. If we see something, we're going to go. And uh, Wiz Fusion was a little bit too far up in mid lane. And we were able to just get like a Violet into Yasuo combo. Just right at the end of the Violet, the Yasuo was able to like hit him, which is pretty lucky, I guess. Yep. All right, and we're going to bring up the Baron replay as our second one for you guys. I want to know what the communication was with Quas on this one, because he was kind of trying to fight Zion. Yeah, so this whole time we know that Quas is getting pushed in and he can't really hold Zion, so we know that we have to do something drastic. And we were just like, all right, just just try to start the Baron and look to either turn if they come in or just... Fi and then once we got really low, we're like, all right, just finish it, finish it, finish it. And then we got super low. We got the smite or the... Yeah, and then, we, and then, <laughs> and then uh, Nintendo just Thanks, jumps in. <laughs> Wait, I, I thought you could. And then Nintendo jumps in and we just like kill him and then... Uh, we just chase him down. Quas, I think TP's behind him. Zion's still pushing bot, and oh. Shift actually lands a nice spear there. But we basically got Baron and got a few kills. And since he's only gonna be able to get that bot in hip turret and not actually the inhibitor, it doesn't really put that much pressure on us. Because now that we have Baron and we have a hard engage count, we know that we can just like run down any lane, hard engage, and just like end the game, which is what we ended up doing. So right there, I was saying, I was like, oh, that was cool. They comboed their smite with Void Boy's Burst at the same time. Was that, did you guys actually try and do that, or did he just... We were just calling to, like, finish. Yeah, we were, we're just dropping yeah, all just our kind damage. of just try to, like, smite yeah. within your damage. It actually wasn't as, as like, clean as I would, I would like it. Like, normally when you try to do that, it, you're trying to smite with, like, a huge burst, and there it was, like, a little delayed. So there was actually a steal attempt that it was, yeah. it was, it was a pretty bad smite by me. But, um... We were able to get it. Voy like stayed on it, got the Baron, and then we could just turn out and get as many kills as possible. All right, guys, talking about the win, let's move forward a little bit. Your fourth game is going to be Dignitas, which is also revolves around fourth place. You guys have yet to lose to them. What do you? What are the, what's kind of the idea going in? What's the feeling? Uh, yeah, we're three zero versus Dignitas right now. We feel pretty good against them. Every time we play them, we feel like we have something, and we just usually manage to outplay them in some respects. Um, there, they just got Golden Glue, and right. I think he's he's a pretty decent mid laner. And I think, depending on how well they've been able to build their synergy, they could be looking pretty scary right now. But I think they will have a pretty good shot at just like four zero clean sweeping them. So, so you're saying you think you have something <laughs> special for them? I don't know. Yes. I can't. I can't tell you. <laughs> With that, you guys have uh, obviously been melding with Bunny Fufu Foo Foo real, really well. How has he been for the team? Because Curse has cycled some supports throughout the seasons. How is this working out? Uh, well, I, I personally just think Bunny's a beast. Like we all, we all just want him to like have the same confidence that he has like in solo queue uh, at LCS, and he does. So like, so the way we like talk about it is like, yeah, Bunny's a beast. Like uh, we, we try to like remain confident in him and just uh, let him do what he does because mm -hmm. he la lands some of the nicest like thresh hooks, uh, like flash plays, lanterns, like everything um, better than almost any other player I've seen. So uh, we just kind of want to just like. Uh, nurture his talent and just make sure that that he can uh, become one of the best supports in LCS. And I think he's he's like he's right there. Like he's he's coming up big. So I'm I'm really happy with Bunny Fufu, and, and we all just like want him on the team forever. Right, nice. Well, definitely looking forward towards your uh, game with Dignitas. You know, Curse is a team that are known for going and getting fourth place. This time around, you guys are trying to fight for it. How important is not facing CLG early in the playoffs, though? Is that an added extra big factor, or is it not quite as much. Yeah, I think, especially for us, since our competition is probably going to be like Coast or Dignitas, if we get in that uh, fourth or fifth slot, which both teams, we have really good records with. We feel really good going into all those matches. I think going, getting that fourth or fifth slot for us is pretty important. And then, yeah, CLG is just looking really strong. So ideally, we wouldn't we'd be playing Coast or Dig, but mm -hmm. honestly, right now, I feel pretty confident if we end up going versus CLG, who knows what's going to happen. 
Right on, guys. Well, congrats on the win. Best of luck to you and Dig in your match later. And keep getting the wins. All right, everyone, we're going to send it back to Freak and Jap for the play-by-play. -play. Thank you very much, Riv. Hey, guys, it's time for our third game of the day, Counter Logic Gaming versus Cloud9. Yeah, and because of Cloud9's victory earlier today against XTG, CLG cannot statistically place in the top two. Mm -hmm. But this game is all about building the confidence for CLG as they prepare for the playoffs. They've beaten TSM. They want to show that they can once again beat Cloud9 and compete on the level of the best team in the league. And you can already see the effects of their confidence growing. Nien was showing some swagger after two Trundle victories last week. And we also talked about how CLG was starting to look a bit predictable in their wins. But even against XGG in their last game, of last week, they shook up their strategy a bit, but still were able to take all their objectives. Yeah, which is a good play by them, of course. Now, CLG have been priding themselves on their strategic map movements, but Cloud9, honestly, they're known for their clean, methodical play as well. Yeah, and it's a surprise when Cloud9 doesn't win. That was such a dominating victory over XGG. Even without hard initiation, they were still able to close out the game fairly quickly. This Cloud9 team is always organized. It's such an awesome matchup now with CLG versus Cloud9 because CLG is the super objective focused team, but Cloud9 is just the super organized team. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Of course, Cloud9 is a team that can rack up kills off of any opponent's mistakes, and according to CLG, that actually starts at level 1. I think CLG is a great team. They're probably one of the least selfish teams out there now. A lot of time, there's no one in their team laning. They're just going together trying to like gank one person and take one thing and that's all they care about. Cloud9 has always been strong with their level ones and they're always a team who can just pull something out at the last second. You know, even though they think about their level ones, we also think about a really like good level one defensive plan. I think a big part of CLG's strategy is centered around double lift. Usually he gets some sort of level of fed that's above the rest of his teammates. They have, I think, probably the best rotation still in LCS. They, they make the best decisions, they have the best objective control, and they just group a lot smoother and more efficiently than other teams. So we have to win lane and snowball that, otherwise they're probably going to rotate us. And it'll be a giant vision war and rotation war against CLG. Well, let's rotate to check out the starting lineups now. On the blue side is Counter Logic Gaming. Nian in the top lane, Dexter in the jungle, Link in mid, double lift on AD carry, and Aphromoo on support. And on the red side, it is Cloud9. Balls in the top lane, Medios in the jungle, high in mid, Sneaky on AD, and of course, Lemon Nation on support. And now this takes us to our featured matchup, double lift versus Sneaky. Yeah, now these are two very strong AD carries. Double lift has been showing he can still deliver on his go-to champions like Vayne this season, but he has also not only went back to Vayne, He's stepping outside of his comfort zone from his team. He picked Sivir. Last week, he picked two games on Lucian. And he's been performing well in that team-oriented style of just playing whatever he wants. But Sneaky has actually been having a superior statistical season. He's creeping up on Double Lift's 2013 spring record of 152 kills. He's currently at 132, whereas Double Lift is sitting at 99. So Sneaky actually a pretty big kill edge. Yeah, he's going to need seven kills a game for the rest of the regular season mm. to crest Double Lift's mark. We'll see if he can do it. I mean, we know Start man... Start counting now. He's only got yeah. three games left. Exactly. Well, of course, yeah. I know with XTG, uh, they started shepherding man clutter into kills to help mm -hmm. him get the uh, individual kill record, and so... I don't know if Cloud9 thinks they're secure enough, but of course, top two in the playoffs, secured first place, important for them as well. I think this team's still taking it very seriously, but hey, kills are, kills are good. I actually find it pretty funny if we keep looking at Double Lift and Sneaky, how Double Lift has went to the team utility AD carries, whereas yeah. in the summer split of 2013, that was Sneaky's thing. He would play the Ash and the Varus because they were the best for the team. Now it's kind of switched roles. Sneaky's playing all the guys that get a bunch of kills. Yeah. And as such, he's gotten the kills. Uh, and the funny thing is, like, I actually remember how well versed Sneaky was, because he would still pick Vayne as the counter pick to Zed. Like, he played the very individualistic AD carries. It's just more that way uh, this this wow. split so far. So like Trundle, Trundle yeah. ban. We have not seen that before, as you can see, zero percent ban rate in the LCS. Yeah. So it comes through there. And honestly, here's the thing with with Vols, and I, I keep thinking this is going to happen at some point. Is Vols has like a a check mark tier list of what he plays. It's Renekton mm -hmm. if it's up. If it's not, it's Shivana. If it's not that, it's Trundle. Yeah. And I want to see someone actually make him... Like, he's chosen to play Rumble once in a while, but just to make him actually play something different, I want to see if that happens for CLG. Check out the Lee Sin ban, too. Dexter plays it two games in the LCS, and now he's drawing Lee Sin bans. Lulu is available, by the way. Yeah. Unbanned. And also unnerfed. We are on the 4.4 patch here. Mm -hmm. So there were the Lich Bane nerfs that hit on the 4.4 patch, but not... 
the nerfs to help picks that have shipped to the live service here in North America. Yeah, so now Neon's got to realize that like his champion pool's cut down a little bit as well, right? Yeah. Rise is gone, Shivana's up, but you know Balls will take that first rotation. Uh, Elise, Kha'Zix also up. Like, there's a ton mm -hmm. of really gigantic top priority picks available. I kind of like how they went with the bans because of yeah. that, right? Like, the majority of these bans are actually targeted, mm -hmm. not the generic bans you would see out of teams. So that just means that all those really powerful champions now are just a mind game about who takes what and who gets where, because Cloud9, as we were talking about earlier, does do the tier listing of champions. Yeah. Like, is number one picked? Okay, we'll pick it then. Yeah, this is great. not there. Yeah. So, does this mean what Lulu Kha'Zix gets to go through? Uh, like, those are like the next sort of tier list type champions. Well, I actually like. wonder what Meteos' current list of junglers would be, but you actually have. <laughs> yeah, they're playing, they're playing sort of they're playing the Cloud9 style. Way. Yeah. Yep. People were talking about, we were talking about Counter Logic Gaming being a little predictable in game. Yeah. Uh, I actually feel like Cloud9 is quite predictable in champ select, but it's not a bad vulnerability necessarily because they rarely get punished. So look at what comes up next with the pools. Of course, AD carries and supports largely untouched. Every AD carry available. Only Morgana banned away from the traditional support roles. And Sorok is a mid laner, so Lucian Thresh comes through. Yeah, that worked great for COG in their victory over TSM. It was actually really funny because Doublelift and Aphromoo had lost to the actual Lucian Thresh combo lane mm -hmm. five times during the year. <laughs> and now they're just saying, let's just play it ourselves. All right. And they locked that stuff down right away. All right. So everyone's getting their who's who of picks right now. Mm. And now Cloud9, they're just, they're happy to play the same lane over again, saying, yeah, Karma Corky. Again for us, long range, great harassment potential. I gotta say, there's a really good push advantage there as well. There is a huge amount of damage that comes out in that lane. Uh, this is now the second pick of Corky we've seen in the LCS. First pick was a two games ago. Uh, they actually didn't... They, here's the thing. They destroyed the XTG bottom lane. Mm -hmm. That was with a couple misplays. Now if they have another LCS game under their belt with Karma and Corky. Yeah. Uh, it'll be very interesting against Doublelift and Afro, who are respected as the best bottom lane by many. In yeah, North America. I, I almost feel like the same way there's the top three teams with COG, TSM, and Cloud9, the bottom lanes especially is looked at as like the strongest part of COG. Yeah. Uh, and there should be debate about who the best bot lanes in North America are. You have the Sneaky Lemon Nation, who most people probably consider a bit farther down. Uh, Double Lift Afro, and yeah. the next Special Turtle. But honestly, if you look at results and success, the Sneaky Lemon Nation should absolutely be in that conversation. Yeah, they're phenomenal players overall. So now Counter Logic Gaming, though, Go back to them. Let's see. So, I want to hit that double line, the double lane thing, a little bit longer because last time this uh, quirky uh, karma lane fought against uh, Thresh Kogba, now it's Thresh Lucian. Lucian, much more versatile. Yeah, yeah. So I'll see if CLG can do something different about this one. Of course, Evelyn coming Whoa. through, Zix coming through, and Shen, top laner for Balls. So pushed around to that champion. How many shields can Cloud9 put on one person right here? This is absolute Three. research. If you, if you stacked up the actual health value of some of these late game shields, you're going to be able to put close to 2,000 shield on one person at one time. If you combine Shen, Lulu, yeah. and Karma together, as far as Cloud9 goes. That's a very interesting composition because Corky's not exactly a super late game scaler. Yeah. So I feel like Cloud9 is going to try and take this game uh, before 40 minutes, go fairly hard early. Uh, whereas CLG has been doing more of that playstyle lately, and their composition is suited as such. They have Link to shove all the lanes on Ziggs, yeah. and then they rotate as groups and try and take early turrets. So I really like the way uh, these compositions are trying to counter each other's playstyles. There's even a couple similarities to the XDG game. Man Cloud played Ziggs as well, had actually really good games, started like 3-0 mm -hmm. or something, yeah. ISCS. So we'll see if CLG can replicate some of that success and fix the rest of the issues. Now as the champs are locked in, we're going to take a look at the voting over at LOLesports.com, and 55% of you are tipping this Cloud9's favor. So a very yeah. close one as far as the online vote goes. And I think in the game, it'll show the same. Yes. These guys have played some spectacular games the last few times they've matched up. The second time these guys played during the regular season was actually CLG's victory over Cloud9. That was the start of their resurgence here yeah. when they were able to shock them. And then there was that other crazy game Cloud9 and CLG played where Aphromoo ended up getting two or three kills with the double buff Leona in the bottom lane. And there were just fights all over the map the whole game. You know, now's, now's the third game, really, with Dexter in the lineup. CLG Cloud9. Yeah. Tipping point game.
It'll be fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, the, we don't count the ones before Dexter showed up. It's true, and, and I keep meaning to like look at CLG's record, but I feel like they had like four or five losses before he showed up there. Yeah, so they've only lost three times with Dexter. Yeah, so yeah. their win rate is honestly very similar to both uh, Cloud9 and TSM's in the mm -hmm. LCS. Like, I know we've asked people, are they in the same tier as these guys? And CLG, they're going to look to prove that they are, maybe even a bit above as we get into the rift. Yeah, Dexter actually tweeted before today, he said, even though the standings don't matter, I don't have the exact quote, even though the standings aren't that affected by how they do, he's very excited to play against Cloud9. Because as we said, uh, it's kind of a measuring bar for them. If they can beat Cloud9 for the second time of the year, it's more confirmation that CLG has arrived. And I mean, Cloud9 are a team that are just, just kind of continue to gather accolades. I mean, you saw them mm -hmm. play internationally just a, about a month ago, place top four, they beat TPA and Team WE mm -hmm. handily. Won their group over the IMR Championships. And XGG said they're very good level one. So we'll see. They're trying those early invades right now. Early ward does come out from Elimination. It's going to spot out the backside of the red buff. They might just trade Vision again with Link so that these guys know, OK, hey, Cloud9 came through. I'm trying to think if you can actually yeah. easily infer whether Elimination bought a ward or not by mm. counting the potions. because. If he gets the extra gold mastery, you wouldn't run with only three potions in a GP10. No, it, so, I believe he has... It's one health, one mana, one ward. Yeah. And you could infer, because if he started with that, he would have three wards without the gold mastery, or four with the gold mastery. Mm -hmm. So, if they're paying super close attention once they see him, they realize it's warded. But at the moment, it's irrelevant, because they haven't necessarily seen him. So, they just know that there may be a ward. Ooh, and C9 goes back through. Elimination checks the brush, and Cloud9 makes sure that no one's going to be on the other side. Of course, they see the Afro is there. Put a little bit of harass down. Five gold for Elimination. Last to Starting off. things out, and the red buff steal started up. Yeah, well, they do get to see with the two-minute trinket ward over the wall. Dexter safely started as blue. Meteo started at red. Now, since they're not doing any lane swaps, it would be a somewhat dangerous invade by... Dexter, if Cloud9 wanted to pull back, but it looks like they'll just trade blue and reds. Yeah, well, they used balls, and he actually put his Trinket Ward down on his own red buff, so he'll be able to see mm. that Dexter is going to trade this one. Actually, the, the Trinket misses yeah. the brush, so he actually... That didn't see him. I don't think he knows that... Yeah. Theoretically, doesn't know Dexter's stealing this. They can, they can infer it, but... When you're placing wards down, they actually change... The indicator changes in color if it's in the brush or not. Mm -hmm. Useful tip. Yeah. Yeah. That's really unfortunate. Actually. It is. Because that could play massive mind games on Meteos right now. Because he's expecting that Dexter didn't counter jungle. He's saying, oh, he just got screwed over because now they, they see him. The ward. He went towards double golems. They oh. see him now. They saw so him in the minions. Dex Dexter greeted up for the double golems. Now they're going to know that he's up there. Of course, this also means that Balls needs to play safely. Mm -hmm. Dexter kind of going right back to his own jungle, though, says there's no real gank to be had. Ganking for Shivana as Evelyn. Not the best at removing guys with move blocks. So Balls are going to be safe here for now. It's got to be where the Evelyn was topside, meaning Lemonation and Sneaky are safe for now. Meteos back down into the jungle. He's hoping to find Dexter somewhere. Yeah, so I I still wonder if they did they ping him at the double golems if they saw him here. Either way, he's going in for the gang from behind. He's going to look for this. We'll have a slow available lands, a good amount of damage. There comes the void spikes. Well, Dexter shows up. Glitter Lance lands on a link. Dexter takes a bit of damage on the way out. Dexter wasn't there. That would have been a flash Q, but Ooh. Sneaky. Aphromoo out mind gaming himself, hopes to get the juke. Does not land it into Sneaky, though. Corky's going to be safe for now. The jump in from Double of Good damage comes through. It's all about the barrier baiting right now. Aphromoo has no ignite, whereas Lemonation saved his. So these bottom lanes really going at it. Ooh. Double and Afro have shoved the lane, which is why their CS is higher at the moment. Uh, and maybe planning a dive. Oh, wow. This is going to be all kinds of close. Lemonation. Level, level three now. So key. That gives big. him enough mana for an, for a shield as well. No match for available. Here comes the hook's gonna land on the sneaky. The berry's gonna come through. Sneaky will go down. First blood goes to Dexter and a lantern on the way out. Counter logic gaming starting out good. That was so clean right there, freak. They were both low when they got that, and because Afro was reliable with the hook, and they all just flashed right out. It was just a brilliant blowing through the barrier of sneaky, and really I think giving them advantage in that lane. Absolutely. Already a 10 minion lead. Sneaky goes back for a Doran's Blade, whereas Doublelift gets a Vamp Scepter. He's going to be much quicker there. Up to the Bloodthirster as they move on towards about the 15 minute mark into the game. Dexter.
continually clearing his own jungle in Meteos. We did see him in the mid for Link. But now we'll see if he can kind of follow up on the fact that Flash is blown. Yeah, the, the first gank by Dexter, again, having that success really beneficial here because I, I do think the bottom lane success here of Doublelift and Afro, especially if they can get a lead in that lane and then start rotating around the rest of the map, is of utmost importance for the current incarnation of the way COG plays. Uh, this actually, this laning phase right here, isn't that much like they play lately, but the fact that they're winning it with that first kill gives them a good chance in the rest of the game. Yeah, I know when we talked to, I'm trying to remember which AD carry we spoke with about uh, you know, his experience playing in the LCS and, and getting used to all the AD carries out there. He said the only one that really scared him a lot uh, was kind of Logic Gaming. Right. He's like, you know, everyone else, they, they just kind of farm. It's not a big deal. It's kind of passive for a while. But you fight up against Rush Hour and it's like, oh, God, we're just dying all the time. And so CLG, they, they at least traditionally play to win the lane. And, it, you know, it's working out here. Yeah, I actually remember we were chatting with St. Vicious th there. That's right, it was Saint. LCS exit, but absolutely, it's because I feel like Cloud9, or sorry, COG has always focused on the 2v2 lane, especially Double Up to Naformu, and really winning the 2v2 matchups. Sometimes it actually gets them in a little bit of trouble because they're almost overconfident and play 2v2 matchups when they know they can't, like when they shouldn't win them because they think they can win them. Uh, Lucian Thresh, though, can win any matchup, and that's why Double Up to Naformu are so confident, and now they're going towards it more often. Yeah, they grabbed it early on, the two of them together, just for the lane dominance. So high, starting to make a little bit more moves around the map. Clears away a pink ward in the enemy jungle. Trying to free up Medios. He actually leaves as Medios goes in. Don't know if he quite got spotted huh. by the ward nearby, though. But I don't believe he'll be able to make any plays just yet in the bottom lane. Link still without Flash for about a minute and a half, but he's safe in the background. Hook nearly lands him a Sneaky. But these guys just, they're... It's interesting to watch lanes like this because they're trying so hard to get these small advantages, but they're so good at the same time being safe to not get caught out. You're seeing them like try really hard to get 50 damage and then back off again. Yeah, and with the Vamp Scepter advantage, you can kind of see why. Any trades in the bottom lane can be resustained up by double lift. Get off that pink ward. Uh, he's gonna be able to get it, yeah. yeah. Grabs the lantern, flies across the map, no big deal. Five gold for Lemonation for harassing him. Frost Fang versus Sight Stone here among the supports. Three CS Elimination winning that one by 50%. It's one thing about Afro, actually. He doesn't necessarily believe in the gold for 10 items. Uh, he'll generally try and get his vision control first, or if he's going for the Talisman route with the Ancient Coin, he'll just try to get to the Talisman as quickly as possible. Doesn't necessarily go for the Targons or the Spell Thief's Edge that often. Yeah, it's interesting watching sort of the way supports are building this season. Everyone remember, has their own theory. Yeah, I just yeah. remember in the preseason, uh, there's an interview with uh, Double F and and they said, yeah, now that supports get more gold, we'll just, we'll just carry every game from the bottom lane. We'll just crush every mm -hmm. single time, kill everyone. And Afro's like, well, I'm going to still buy some wards, <laughs> but I'll buy Mikhail's for you, Double Lift. Yeah. I'll give you cleanse, that way you can bring barrier. There you go. This is an interesting matchup, actually, because balls pretty much dominates every top laner in North America. But now he's on Shen, who doesn't necessarily crush lane. He still has a CS advantage early on against Nian. Uh, but his impact, I want to see if it's diminished this game. Yeah. Cloud9 often relies on balls to actually carry, even though teams don't expect that to really be the, the case. And I don't know if he can do that on Shen. And I mean, we talked about Nian on the other side of this one, and I know we... I feel like we talked about Nian being very good at team fighting, having mm -hmm. usually a rough time in the lanes, though. Yes. So going fairly equal down 10 CS, but no kill threat, I feel like that's a great place to start for CLG, and that the fact that they rush pick the Shivana, giving away Kha'Zix Lulu for it, mm -hmm. like, but they're winning in the lane that they picked early on, both the top lane and the, the AD carry support lane. Like, This is not a bad start for CLG, both from champ select and in execution so far. Yeah, I can't wait to see the shields come out in team fights. Uh, especially for a team that is co at, that is as coordinated as Cloud9. Shen plus Lulu plus Karma. On to a Kha'Zix who evolved his R first and can get damage reduction while he's stealth yeah. away. Like, I really wonder if CLG is going to be able to finish kills in these team fights, despite having the large amount of AoE damage. That's what yeah. CLG then has going on. Yeah, that'll be interesting to watch for, but there's the ulti in from Kha'Zix. Damage onto Link does have Flash, but it'll land some good damage. Ooh. Oh, hi! Knocking him into the air, getting the kill, stopping the satchel. Here comes there's the Shen shields. ulti as well. Dexter's got nowhere to go, does have Flash, but it doesn't matter. Medios flashes, goes down anyway, though. Dexter with the kill credit. 
The 2-2 two -two on the map. The turret shot's really stacked up there, but a 2-1 overall, making a 2-2 two -two for the game. That's the Chen making an impact right there. Really well-played gank by High in particular, popping out the second knockup and making sure they could secure the kill on Link. Let's see if he can take advantage of that mid lane now. In the end, might get a lot of the turret for it, though. He's getting a lot of damage down. Ball's trying to keep yeah. this one alive, and he actually went for early magic resist here, so... No Sunfire early on, right? No way to push the wave out quickly. And the fact that Nian went towards Blade of the Ruin King, this MR build that Ball started doesn't help him as much in the one-on-one -on -one either. No. Right there. We'll see if Nian can punish him for that. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting to see because if it would have been a tank Shivana, then the magic resist would have been the absolute right call since Eve is a magic damage heavy jungler and COG's team in general is the majority magic damage. But uh, now, because of the counter build by Nien, might even out a little bit. See where it pans. Link and Medio spotting each other. Nice Satchel. Gets Link to safety. Making the right play. Satchel Link behind himself. Oh. But a bit of an engage in the bot lane and the mid lane. Link taking more damage. No Satchel available. No one gets a kill, but so does Medios and High in the mid lane. Trading kills across the map. Yeah, two things happening at the same time. We'll get the replay of the second one soon. But this mid lane gank was just brute forcing down the mid lane. Medios picks a lane and oftentimes repetitively ganks it and then shoves afterwards. So they're going to take a huge advantage. Most games, that's top lane with balls. This game, it's mid lane with high. A couple shots to go to that turret's going to go down. We look back bottom lane. bottom lane kill. Yeah, it was just Afro again making a play. Lands a hook and then plays him out of the Valkyrie. Just exquisite thresh play. There's, these North American threshes are damn good. And he dodged a big one rocket right at the end there in the brush. He was one shot away from getting killed in the trade going through. Top Gonna lane. be a risky one. Yeah, Nian very low health in the top lane, getting the chased around by Shen right Unhealthy here. dragon. Uh, this is a bad place to be. Ooh, he nice light heal. steals. Still goes down. Nice attempt. Gets a couple of minions for it. So, yeah. you know, more money in the yeah. pockets. And this game is just getting pretty clutch here. COG trying to force the dragon because they knew Cloud9 was sending reinforcements up to that top lane. They're going to try and burst it down before Cloud9 comes in. We're only going to get the burst. It's going to happen right here. And of course, the rest of the team can jump over the wall. If CLG yeah. with a quick escape. Really nice strategic call there mm -hmm. by CLG. Because even though it wasn't a gank that killed Yen, he had the illusion of escaping enough that Cloud9 got a little bloodthirsty and went to finish him off, which pulled them out of position for that dragon, which otherwise wouldn't have been able to be taken. Yeah. By counter logic game. Great reaction. That's the kind of things that I see from the better teams is mm -hmm. they'll identify a weakness and say, okay, this is going to happen to us regardless. What can we do with the fact that they're trying to get this kill or get this turret or get this dragon? So you identify that and get themselves a dragon kill for themselves. And you can see a 500 gold lead says, yeah. you know, CLG, team to be respected, team to watch out for if you end up sixth seed in yeah. the playoffs. Nobody wants to play CLG right now. Not even Cloud9. Yeah. There's a chance. I mean, even the second seed between TSM and Cloud9, if things did fall according to seeding in the playoffs, yeah. would mean CLG plays the two seed, and that means no one wants to be the two seed. Either. These guys go. Double lift after move. Still chilling in the bottom lane. The CS has been equalized, but the Bloodthirster already done for double lift. He's going to get him a bit of a team fight edge. Dexter and Nian going to take the double golems in the face of a ward. I guess Uba for himself, so he's still holding up. 1-0-2, I gotta say, the mid lane pick is working much better yeah. for Cloud9. I know people sort of tend to give High Flack as mm -hmm. the least standout member, but he's having, I would say, kind of the best performance so far this game. Yeah. High actually plays a very roam-heavy role. It's because he doesn't care about his own individual farm. He'll oftentimes roam top to get balls going, or roam bottom to get the bottom lane going. This game, though, he is the focal point of Meteos' ganks and is making an impact. Well, Dexter is about to uh, get help from Nian, so he's fine. Uh, did see a pink ward though. High knows that uh, the ward's days are numbered. They're down to three hits. Ooh, nice sweep. sweep away award. Yeah, nice sweep right there. One thing I do want to point out though, as we see Aphromoo on Thresh, is just these last two games with Bunny Foo Foo's Thresh and now Aphromoo's Thresh. Mm -hmm. These guys are amazing in Thresh. There was Bunny's yeah. hook onto the Elise out of the repel when it was jumping to minions, and Aphro with all of his hooks in plays this game already. And a lantern to get him out. There you go. Playing around it too, and, and you got to give credit to the rest of the team as well to know what's available. Double if can overcommit, knowing a lantern's waiting for him on the way out. Uh, and just in general, I mean, I, I love when uh, I will dominate first started talking about Bunny Fufu and said, I've never played with a better Thresh. Yeah. He'll, he'll just say, Go now, and he knows the lantern's waiting for him. That, he's, that he can time the ganks from the support role. Like, there's a whole lot of crazy things you can learn as Thresh that, that really pay off for you. Well, do they go now? 
Not with the missed plays. Uh oh. Bit of a root on Afro. Some damage comes through. Box gonna land. Lemonation's got the Shen ulti now. High in the front lines. Video surround as well. Flash away from Afro. Now Dexter a bit caught up there. Does have his own flash. Will it be enough damage? The burst comes through. They get one. Whoa. In comes Medios over the wall. Flayed backwards. Puts a slowdown. The damage does come through from Lulu. The flash back over from Medios. Keeping them safe. Two for zero for Cloud9. They act, yeah, absolutely. They snuck a second kill and yet flies in afterwards. Misses both of them. Well, he still wants blood and then turns back around. So not quite on that one. Mid lane going to get pushed away. Of course, right after we give Aphromoo a bunch of credit for being amazing on Thresh, he misses <laughs> both of his skills and they lose two kills. Uh, curse of the casters right here. But Cloud9 now with the slight lead. CLG trying to make something back. And this was just brute force by Cloud9 catching people in the pit. And I believe it was the Ignite Tick that finished off Doublelift while he was trying to call. So yeah. nice play overall by Cloud9. They're overpowering people with their shields right now. It's working so nicely. They can just keep going in. Works out well. Double lift now in the back lines of the bottom lane. Keeping his turret alive. Getting the farm. 130 CX. CS on that man. Yeah, Watch back to the top lane. This top lane. An unfortunate series of events there for Nian. He isn't able to match Balls so far with his rotations down. It, it, it's just perfect. Balls is the type of player who would go on Shen and then just start 3-0-1. <laughs> against a Shivana who counter-built him early on in the game. Now he's got the Ninja Tabi, so he's okay against the auto attacks. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's an interesting mix of damage here from CLG. Honestly, not a lot. Well, actually, there's a decent amount that you would want Mark Treads for, mostly from Thresh here. But even with all this, all these accolades we're giving Cloud9, CLG's even in gold. They are absolutely in position to win this game. Even still. All the wave clear from Link. And the stealthing of Dexter gets caught by Meteor. Slow and Meteor jumps in with the wings. Level 11 here pops the ulti. Damage going in. Dexter Ooh. under serious trouble. Flash taunt comes through. Kill picked up right there. And now it's uh, Nian chasing down to Meteos. Meteos X Rinker was popped. He gets away with the ultimate. As a red buff, Nian has oh, a man. flash. Ziggs bomb does catch on the Meteos. Nice aim right there by Link. Revenge kill. Good predictions. Gets one back. That's what COG's been doing for most of this game. Even when Cloud9 makes a good play, like Balls killing Yen, COG will get a dragon. Or if Dexter gets caught out, they overcommit, and Link gets them with a bomb. And now, two turrets are getting pushed. Yeah, well, top lane tier two, honestly, worth a lot more than the bottom lane first tier, so more gold going to be going into COG's pockets comparatively. Sneaky getting the split push farm, 152 CS on him. Bloodthirster finally done. We'll see if he can do much more for himself in this one. Yeah, and Aphromoo, after getting that turret credit, they say, okay, let's get, let's get a bit of control over your jungle. And you can see two wards now going to control the red buff of Cloud9. Yeah, so Yen still trying to stay in this game and a bit of pressure. Can he land a hook? Ooh. The speed of high. Yeah. A little bit too much right here. High speed. High speed Lulu. Goes in for the fight and double lift. Puts the Glitter Lance down. Yen inside. They're going to be okay. Ooh. I gotta say, it's a lot easier for Doublelift to get his health back than for High. Those skirmishes probably not great for C9. Dexter looking for the flank. Gonna get spotted by Meteos. A bit of a root yeah, coming in. Nia Dragon is, in place. is really key. Uh -oh, see the Shadow Prime coming in right now. A lot of shields and the ulti coming through as well. High still might go down. Shen, he does arrive to the fight though. Nia low on health in the back lines. He's gonna get away safely though. One for zero, CLG. Really nice catch there. Burning through all of the shields from Cloud9 and now being able to get this next Dragon. It's all about the starts of these fights for COG as they control yet another dragon. Now a thousand gold lead. It's a battle of their burst against the shields of C9. They get just enough to remove the squishies here. High starting a bit more ability power to keep them safe. Link getting the blue buff steal as well. And the wards are still alive on the top side of the map. Medios making the best of a bad situation. Taking away the wolves. Why not? Angrily knock them down still. Almost level 12 for him. Keeping up. And look at how spread out everyone became immediately after that Dragon 2. All the objectives are still being hotly contested over. Uh, both these teams are probably the best in the league at controlling objectives like Dragon and Turret. So far, CLG has the edge in that category, which is why they are ahead of this game. You can see right now, Medios still actually trying to take these, but CLG not ready to let this one go. Good dodge by Medios. Spike comes through, gets oh! played! The jump gets played! Medios has nowhere to go! Aphromu, LCS, big play. Gonna get out with this one. Link gets the goal and the blue buff back. Just a nice play. He missed the hook to throw him off. Just so he would expect it with the play, but being able to get the jump <laughs> right there from Medios. Totally securing the kill and getting the blue buff back. Check this one out. As soon as he starts jumping, man. Oof. 
And then a lot of damage dumped down by Cloud9, but they didn't want to commit to that fight. Yeah. Because it would have meant more pain. And to a certain extent, I feel like you can't blame Thresh for missing a hook when you juke like the other direction, yeah. 500 units. That, that hook is... He went is, through the golem. ...is a lot of prediction. That, you can't hit that yeah. hook. He's behind something. It was only if he was running away. So it's actually yeah. just the right kind of hook. Yeah. Besides, he would miss if he did throw it, so... You know, you mm -hmm. saw the hooks you don't throw. There you go. Well, top lane now. Balls did get the red buff for his team with Meteos dead. He wanted to get that one down. Nian pulling a bit of attention to the top lane, but he is safe right here in 185 minions. Means that his Shivana pick is paid off as far as the laning phase goes. He's got a turret lead and a minion kill lead. But Balls has been getting around the map. 3-0-2 for him. So Cloud9, 2,000 gold down. CLG, of course, earned a 2,000 gold lead for themselves. Great dragon pressure by them. Hmm. We're going to move into team fights. I feel like, pretty soon, once the other turrets finally drop off. Yeah, the, the big question as far as the creation of team fights is how the split push pressure is actually playing out right now. Uh, double lift and Nien are shoving lanes better than Cloud9 is right now. So all the fights are actually at CLG's choice. Well, the gun on Medius has the ulti. In comes Dexter. The high shows up as well. There's the box. Jumps over the wall. Medius is safe trading. Ultra's that one. CLG backs on out. They're fine. Yeah, but once again, you can see Cloud9 is the ones rotating through their own jungle, and CLG are the ones catching them off. Yeah. Their wave clear is just superior right now. Factoring in that Ziggs, who started 0-2, now is 3-2 by Link and really just trying to power down Cloud9 and starve them from objectives. If they get this mid turret, they can take a lot more. Well, here comes the Siege. Balls waiting in the top lane with Stand United. The rest of Cloud9 ready to defend this one. Looks like all four, or at least nearby, as Medios takes the race as the farm juggler he is. 100 CS for him. Two, three, and three in the game. Same score as Dexter. High goes in with a lot of speed. Finds Link, huge damage. Ignite is on. Is it going to be enough? Ah, barrier required by Link. Flashes away from the red buff. Wow. I think he flashed because he was worried about the next glitter land. Oh. That came from high because help picks was still on his head. Yeah. Uh, but even so, he Picks barely stays alive after the barrier right there. And now Cloud9 on a bit of a power play, getting the waves back under control. Uh, with Link gone, his ulti is available, but he's not going to toss it till he leaves the base right here. Minion's dead for now in the mid lane. But a new wave comes up. Ball's still pressuring Nian off on the side. And Nian can stop Stand United. He does have the uh, Dragon's Descent available. So. Balls will have to be smart about how he gets into the team fight. Cloud9 actually do back off of that though, realizing that CLG does have health back. This is still a really close game. It's been, I don't even really know how to describe it because there's been a lot of rotations. You know, CLG's gotten the two dragons mm -hmm. and there's been a lot of catches in this game, more so than you normally see. It's like both teams are heavily rotating, but getting caught while doing it. Yeah, it's just, it's a lot of deep wards, I feel like, yeah. setting it up. I mean, CLG, you can see, Case in point, after me right here, into the enemy jungle, the wards go looking for the team that goes around the Wraith camp. Deadlift in high, and another of a fight. Again, high trying to put wards down, gets spotted out by the enemy team. Looks for a bit more lens. Another one, Meteo steals away the, uh, the Wraith. Double takes a rocket in the back of the head. Map control is just so paramount for these guys. Yeah. Right now, especially with all the hooks and plays after movies been landing. Yeah, they're both just playing like in the front of the enemy jungle. That's yeah. where both teams like want to place their exactly. points where they want to play like, yeah. play around. And like pink wards constantly getting removed means neither team can take away vision quickly. Mm -hmm. I really think the next dragon is going to be so critical here. Uh, Cloud9 was outplayed by CLG in that last fight because High was actually able to be dropped through all his shields. He really wants to get a death cap before that fight, but he just doesn't have the gold for it. Uh, whereas Link does have his Rabadon's death cap right now, that could actually be a pretty big factor if Link can land a good ultimate on Ziggs here. Obviously, Balls has his ultimate up. I think every single ultimate in the game is up right now. It's just flashes and a barrier that is down on a couple of the sides. So really, potentially an apocalyptic dragon. Right now. We're missing a total of three combat summoners right now. The Ignite of High and both the summoners of Link. So. Everything available, we'll see. Trinkets on cooldown, a couple of them. So that's a that's a missed opportunity. Can't cast yeah. him in the battle. You can see how much sweeping and war control is going on in this game. Four sweepers on one side, three sweepers on the other. Mm -hmm. Balls, Only one. Balls is keeping his ward because he's more likely to be split pushing. And he needs yeah. to put a little bit of vision up to prevent himself from getting two or three v one. Yeah. Is High going to try and flank here? This would be crazy call. Well, he's going to kill a ward on the way in. Yeah. Got to make sure he doesn't. Run straight Stay ahead. visible, yeah, in fact. Uh, upgraded Sweeper is there for Nian. He can reveal Kha'Zix mid-fight. Also, three pink wards in the inventory. 
So we see if they can track Meteos very well here. Hi, look on the back side. Mid turret's gonna go down. Top go. Well, Meteos the generally jumps on in. Big tank there in the front line. Huge AoE goes down. Who's gonna take the damage first? Two man taunt in the back line. Ball's still there. Double flow. He goes down to high. Ball's still going down. Finds Akramu. Double kill. Triple kill now. As wow. more people fall over. Mass kills for C9. They just steamrolled CLG right down there. It was a stealth Kazix with the Shen who became monstrous and wild on top of CLG. That was just brute force onto CLG's face, and they get three for nothing. CLG trying to get a turret back as a defense, but that Baron's going down. Well, smart play by CLG, of course. Cloud9 for sure. Get the Baron for themselves. It will be a gold lead, but again, we talk about strategic play, smart play, rotational play. Like kind of logic gaming, take what they can off yeah. of that loss, but it means a 1,200 gold lead, only a 1,200 gold lead for Cloud9 off that fight. Yeah, and they're actually making sure to get the Dragon as well, because Dragon is worth a huge amount of gold at 25 minutes here. They don't want to get CLG out of here either. Guess is the wrong bush there, Elimination. Kind of logic gaming, going to be safe. You know, he went for the logical brush. Yeah, but this not is the, the wrong team. Logical brush. Yeah, exactly. Can't, can't out mind game them. It's okay, you just said the punchline. Yeah, right there, even though it's a box, it didn't stop much because Meteos and Balls were huge coming through there and it was really just about closing on to Dexter and it was actually to CLG's detriment that they tried to ball up around the dive. Uh, it just meant they sat inside the Sunfire Cape of the Shen and a little bit of AoE damage from Kha'Zix. And it was fun to watch sort of that fight separate as well. I watched uh, Nien there who dove in for Sneaky. He was basically 1v2ing the back line. Lemon and Sneaky were like, Nian, get away from us, like, don't touch us. And it was Meteos, Balls, and High just by themselves diving into the rest of CLG and getting all those kills in that fight, so. Yeah. And even if Sneaky gets completely eliminated from a fight, like, the Rockets have such a long range <laughs> that Corky can almost always contribute near the backside of fights. Yeah. Done a good job of this one overall. Balls, gonna pick the bottom lane now to split push. But CLG, right, they're on the back foot. They're good damage and a double lift here. It's gonna be the engage from Dexter. Can they find much? Zix Bomb comes through, forcing the flash away. High takes a Mikhail's Crucible to keep himself alive. But now Meteos wants Meteos. in. Can you get into this? Got one in. The dock up comes through. They find Dexter. The land is gonna keep double lift safe for now. One rocket comes through. The damage on a double lift. The big one finds it. Sneaky getting another kill. Two, two, and five for him. Double kill. Getting on the board. And this is the point in the game where Cloud9 is most dangerous. They got the levels so the bases of the shields are very high. And they're just able to push through CLG. And no matter what CLG throws back at them, they are almost unable to break through any of these defenses. Now with three dead, this could be inhibitor, maybe more. Yeah, Balls is locking up the ends with a four versus one in CLG's base. Forced it back for the inhibitor turret, but I mean, look at the shields. Meteos is fine to do this right there. Yeah. Won't even barely lose health. Now to the inhibitor. They were just able to brute force that turret down without their tank tanking. They just tanked with shields, and they get the inhibitor while Balls is chasing down. The only health comes from a Spectre's Kyle, the only armor from a Ninja Tabby, and Meteos fully tanked a backdoor inhibitor turret. So, Balls, of course, in a great spot. And I just want to point out another cool thing here. So, Balls could have went Spirit Visage for cooldown reduction, more healing in fights. He went Banshees, I'm thinking, to help block the fact that Nian oh, can't dear. stop his TP. Link, can he get away? In comes the jump from Meteos. No, he can't. Burns Flash didn't quite need to. Goes down 14 6 Cloud 9. Things are getting real rough for CLG here because they've lost control of their own jungle. They didn't necessarily think there were going to be two people waiting around in that part, so Link thought he would be safe, but he couldn't know he would be safe. Mm -hmm. He went for it because he needs farm to stay in the game, and he got punished by Cloud9. Yeah, and punished because of all the freaking ward control. Look at the mm -hmm. the red dots in the upper, like the, the left-hand side jungle right now from C9. They've warded the entrance to the blue buff. They've warded one of the entrances to the wolf camp as well. There's not a lot of places that CLG can go safely. They've been forced to pink ward their own jungle. Look at the one by the double golems there. He's, they're fighting to control what areas they can, but C9 owns more of it. Yeah, Cloud9's going to continue to play relentlessly right here. They see a Dexter. See if he can get away. Elimination going in for the root right here. Getting a whole bunch of money for it. Slows him down as well. In comes Meteos. Big damage out there. Here comes the rocket as well. Meteos on a rampage. 6, 3, and 7. Yep. Now with Dexter off the table, the fear of a flank is diminished. Uh, COD actually doing a pretty smart thing here. Pushing up mid lane as much as they can to try and deter this push. Cloud9 just has too much presence around the map, though. Yeah, they really do. It's going to be three men down the bottom lane. But the mid lane actually is going to pull the attention away. Recalls. Come in from Cloud, not, no, it's going to be Lemonation is recalling High Sneaky Ooh. Meteos want to keep going. Ooh, this could be a bit late here. CLG has a lot of pushing power. Cloud9 getting out-rotated here by CLG. 
We're seeing the recalls kind of started and stop right there. CLG definitely looking for this one. Inhibitor turret is going to go down now for the inhibitor itself. Sneaky and Meteos, a full turret and a half behind the CLG Wrecking Crew. So much of Cloud9's damage is off pushing turrets right here. The inhibitor falls, and I don't even know if they can chase them down. Oh, the slow's not going to land. They haste in from high, though. Can he find it? The hook in from Aphromoo. The damage to the high. Great, Mikhail Scrooge. Here comes Shunt. Double try to run away. Can they find much more? Aphromoo gets, gets uh, rooted up in the end. Not even getting attacked right now. High's going to find one on this one. Still looking for double. Double has mana, though. Pinkboard comes down, finds damage onto high. Here comes Meteos on the backside. The shields keep high alive. And Meteos finds a, a kill with his team. Ooh. It's going to be down in the end. Forced to cut up the other rocket. Not going to find enough. The shutdown comes in. The end actually finds two, but the three for two battle overall for C9. Nice flash at the end by Nien, but it's just not enough as Cloud9 rotated back up and was able to get a couple of kills. Now the push down the mid lane comes from Cloud9. Crazy set of fights there by CLG. Man, I mean, they, they kind of came out, I would say, sort of ahead with that one. They did, because they were against a team that had all the control. They got an inhibitor, and they didn't get obliterated in that fight. Cloud9, because their damage was so delayed, even though they played that fight pretty well with Hai getting a wild growth off onto Nien's Dragon's Descent, uh, still fell a fair bit, and I'd say it was just a great strategic call by CLG. Wonderful stuff by these guys, but Cloud9 still taking as much as they can right here. Top lane tier two turret goes down, meaning the only turrets left on the map are the ones inside CLG's base. Yeah, watch this ultimate by Hai though, right as the Dragon's Descent was gonna hit him. Uh, and then the Shenol comes in to make sure he's Super healthy. Doublet does a nice job of life stealing up on the rates. And then this fight is all about the collapses and who can get where when. Doublelift tried to play the corner game, does fairly well against Hai to get him low. And because of the Ziggs bomb and because Nien still had his flash, he was able to pick up two kills there just with his burnout and his auto attacks, making the best of a bad situation. Did what he could, but it still means 7,000 gold right now. Puts Cloud9 in the favor. Hit more than 10% here in this one, close to 15. High and ball share and some farm down to the bottom lane. And you know, they push balls in a Shen. 3 0 8. Big pressure on the map. Not a ton of kill participation, but he's there when the team needs him. Yeah. Cloud9 is going to continue to try and press this game really, really fast because they actually know that their late game isn't completely unstoppable. Uh, we might not have time to get into it because this game is going to be so fast, but Corky doesn't necessarily have a great way of scaling into the late game because it's hard for him to get penetration. And then. Uh, as we can see, a little bit of a glitch here on our screen. Never mind, that's just our screen. Um, and then the rest of the game has Lulu, whose shields will eventually be able to get broken through. And that's going to be a problem. As COG pushes up the mid lane here. All right, here they go. Looking for more pressure to go into the outer turret here. Finally, turret number three for Counter Logic Gaming. See, they keep finding more. Whoops. They're going to be moving in towards the, the Baron now for themselves. Looking into this one. We'll see if uh, C9. He would stop them. Poke big out. Baron play right here. Big They're rocket pushing well. Chen. Looking for it. They got to just go in. Well, going to be the ulti coming in high. Looks in for Link. Link taking a whole bunch of pain. Silence as well. Down he goes. Two kills so far for Cloud9. Looking at now Nian in the front lines. Can he win this in the three versus five? Still running away. Medios on the chase though. Slow comes out. Kill comes in. Three kills Cloud9. Only double lift. And Dexter are alive. Devils tries to outplay. He will go down as well. High with a solo kill credit. Only Dexter alive. Yeah, Cloud9 taking the most advantage of their power play right now. Again, just going in and obliterating the CLG lineup. Another great flank kill. They actually were able to kill Link before his ultimate went off. And another Baron may just secure this game for Cloud9. Dexter is around in the wings, though. Reveal is going to be on the wrong side from Sneaky. No real vision, Dexter. Not going to find much. There goes the Baron. Meteo secures it without even smiting. Doesn't even need it. 22 to 8 in kills now. 13,000 gold. Cloud9 looking good in the end game so far. Just take stock of items right here. Sneaky nearing Infinity Edge. Much more gold than Double if Double if hasn't had the best game. Uh, High had his lane ganked pretty heavily early on in the game. It's allowed him to power up substantially on Ruby. And then, of course, that Kazix pick that was able to just fall into the hands of Meteos has been so damn aggressive because he has so much to back him up. Shen shields, Lulu shields, and the works. So he tried to force this Baron to stop the split push, but then everyone was able to dodge that Thresh pretty much, getting onto Link at the most important time. And once Link was down, the sustained damage was pretty much ruined. Everyone else on Cloud9 could just chase down CLG. Well, CLG back, revived, but the mid inhibitor is going to go down anyway to the Baron up C9, and they look to keep going with this one. 
Everyone on CLG is alive. This is ridiculous. Well, they're gonna try they're anyway. They're daring CLG to fight them right now. Big shield, big haze turret, one hit from dead. That's gonna go down. Falls in, gets the hook up at the front lines. Meteos there as well. Bomb hits on the two in the back lines. They go. Nian takes a whole bunch of punishment. Sneaky is safe. And high grabs the first kill. Meteos gets Mikhail's, gets hooked up though. He's got nowhere to go. He ults, he leaps, he gets the shield. Is it gonna be enough? Dexter almost trades his life for it, but does survive. Thanks to Aphromu. But a one for one for a turret. You almost never see a team push Nexus turrets in an actual 5v5 there. All five members were alive for CLG. And now they're laying in wait, hoping that CLG pokes their head out. I gets hazed in, he gets the shield on top, just goes down right away. Sneaky wants retribution, can he find it? Link puts the poke down, Aphromoo in the front lines, Dexter there as well, Lemonation gets hooked up by Aphromoo. He goes down, two kills a double if the ult comes out. Sneaky has nowhere to go, triple kill for double it. Now it's on to Balls, he kills off Dexter, but he's got nowhere to go. The push comes in, is it gonna be the Quadra for double it? Yes it is, wow. four kills CLG. That could be a monstrous turn here for CLG. How much can they actually take off this one? These are long death timers. 35 minutes in, the four kills on a double lift has not been shot for yet. They're gonna go for this inhibitor freak. They've got a mini wave behind them and the inhibitor turret is of course already dead. So here they go, only Meteos is alive for the next 15 seconds. Looks like a three on one right here. Meteos shows, look for Link, tries to explode the Another fall through. The bomb comes through, the ulti is on. The W lands, Meteos gets the reset. He goes in for Afro, turns on the stealth, jumps away, doesn't want any more blood here. Oh, double lift. lift has no more mana, but it's just enough to get the kill, the one for one. There is 3,200 unspent gold on double lift right now, and he has just turned himself into the focal point of this game. Still 10,000 gold down, but inhibitors down on both sides. The Nexus turret down for CLG. A game that was effectively over two minutes ago just got turned around by that quadra kill from Double Up. Double Up went from 2, 5, and 4 to 7, 5, and 4. Yeah. Over the last minute right here, Counter Logic Gaming. Life breathed back in. 9,000 gold now. Much better than it was before. 13k not too long ago. Double's gonna recall, spend his 16,000 total gold. Infinity Edge comes in for the man. What's gonna move for next? Yeah, he needs Spectre's a little cowl. bit of magic resist, so that gives him a lot of help against uh, one help picks or Glitter Lance hitting him from a very fed high. And, you know, these last five, ten, these last five minutes are kind of hard to put in perspective yeah. because, yes, what Cloud9 did felt very over aggressive. And it most likely was. You know, they should not have tried to push in 5v5, and their bait at the end was a little bit over-aggressive. However, Cloud9 kind of has to do those things. At this point, Lucian is world stronger than Sneaky's Corky, and the shields from Cloud9 might not be enough once CLG has enough straight-up damage, which is going to come now from Link and Doublelift as they have diversified threats on their team. Uh, it's not just a steamroll victory for Cloud9 anymore because CLG may have turned it around at the last possible moment. And I mean, you kind of look at everyone who's powering up right now, right? Like, Balls is only getting tankier. Right? His last uh, completed item was Thorn Mail there. Before that was Randuin, so he's just going to get a BP frontline status going in. Positives tend to build tanky after their first two big damage items come in as well. So, yeah, it's sort of like if CLG weathers the burst storm, they're going to be kind of okay. And I want to see if Sneaky actually goes for a sixth offensive item here, like a Phantom yeah. Dancer or if he goes for the Banshees, which is now standard for AD carries. Well, it's really tricky on Corky because he has such mixed damage. It's actually yeah. very difficult for him to scale uh, into the late game. I, I really do think a defensive option is the right call for him. Yeah. In well, a game like this, he will be much more physical-based because you'll rely more on auto attacks because you're in fights for longer. So yep. uh, the value of Ayad and things like that does go up uh, now that you're this late in the game. We'll see if these guys can pay it off. Of course, C9's mid inhibitor is dead. They want to get CLG's back, though. Baron up at a minute 45. This could really key on uh, whether or not Aphromoo can stop the divers from getting onto his carries. He's had tons of great hooks and plays thus far to keep them out. It also depends on the poke that Cloud9 has. They got a little bit of poke early on to CLG and are trying again to brute force his inhibitor. Not the best target to hook. So kind of of He's done a two-thirds, doesn't quite land the taunt on a Nien. Now he's done a half HP, in comes Dexter. Finds a four-man ulti, elimination in the back line, taking a bunch of pain in the end now as well in a similar situation. Satchel gonna knock back Meteos right here. Hook not quite gonna land in a sneaky. Nice rocket. Inhib under fire. Good damage comes through, and Hib does go down. C9 get a small lead again. Meteos walks out. Uh, sneaky a bit over aggressive, but I guess he's safe. Yeah, he can fight back a little bit with Dexter. Dexter just lost half of his life. Yeah, and a couple of swings and 
So a nice push there by Cloud9, I'd have to say. Being able to brute force in. They still hold pretty heavy item advantages across the board. If we take the 80 carries out of the equation, who uh, double lift is ahead with the Spectre's Cow. But if the gold keeps going like this, you see if you can hold up for another 10 or 15 minutes. We'll hit a point where everyone, uh, all of the carries are going to be at six items and the gold advantage will cease to be important. COG wants to get to that point. Yeah, they've got a lot of room to grow, especially on Dexter, who's just kind of sitting at kind of one and a half completed items after the Elder Lizard. So he's got tons of room to grow right here in this one. If he can get some of the farm, you'll see a much tankier front line here to help along with the end. Rest of C9 still looking, and I want to see if they push more than just the mid lane, though. Last time around, they just went for Nexus turrets. They got one Ooh. of them. They're trying to sneak in the back here a little bit, but they would probably lose that base race. Yeah, Dexter can't backdoor that by himself. They've got a recall. C9 has the inside track. They're going to move forward. The recalls all come through. Remember, there's only one Nexus turret on COG's Nexus, so that is what would slow down their play. Another thing that that did for Cloud9 is it pulled CLG back on the base, meaning Cloud9 can probably force this Baron down before CLG can respawn. Elimination is sneaking in to take the ward down, and here comes the push onto Baron Nasher. Where does CLG choose to go with this one? Nian and Co are running up there. Not a lot of wards spot their progress up the map right there. CLG taking the slow road. They go for the mid lane instead. Cloud9, get the Baron. That was just so smart by Cloud9. And the Ziggsalt is down as well because they used it to scout. If Cloud9 can catch here, they could very well end the game. They might just run down the mid lane knowing that the Ziggsalt is down and try and brute force this once again. See what they can do. Catalogic Gaming forced to recall on the other side of the map right there. They should get home in time to guard the base, but Cloud9 are here and ready with super minions and with a Baron buff and no supers on the other side. They look for the bottom lane right now. Big wave there actually ready to start the siege. Balls in the front line. Nien there to try to defend as well. Ziggs puts a bit of damage. Nien dives in towards the back. In comes Eve as well. This is the cataclysmic fight these guys want. Here comes Balls trying to run away. Lucian with damage. Dexter forced to run away with this one. Nien huge damage. Takes a land oh. back high. Gets hooked up. Takes a shuttle. He stays alive. Looks for Abramu. Pops the Zonias. Sneaky force back as well. Half HP. Oh. Lower health bars high. One hit from Dead gets out. C9 forced away. Link has ulti in 10 seconds. Can you believe nobody died in that fight? What a hold off by CLG there. Hooks, Zhonya's, shields, and tons of damage right there by CLG. Who's this gonna get? Anyone? No, nobody. That one's gonna be safe. Imagine if the Ziggsalt was up for that fight. Yeah. How much that would have changed things. CLG could have repelled them. And at this point, 42 minutes into the game with exposed inhibitors on both sides, a one-sided one fight by either team could end the game. Absolutely could. So. See how this pans out. Carnalogic Gaming to continue to outscale Cloud9. They're holding on to Baron buff and a small minion advantage here overall. It's gonna be the push this is the, the most red buff. Dangerous red buff. Red buff gets taken. Double has a lantern. Takes it. Ascension Yu is gonna keep the team safe. Meteor's flash flows. He lands it. Here comes the ulti. Can he find anything? With a flay land. Will he find double? There he goes. Has GA though. Not great for double. In comes Balls. What's gonna get a find? Double up over the wall. He gets the kill on Afrimu. Now Nien in the middle of Cloud9 has nowhere to go. Flashes the wall. Meteor's the chase. The rocket doesn't quite land, but Nien's going to go down. Oh man. 11, 5, and 10 for Meteos' Kha'Zix. Old habits die hard right there. Double lift and Afrimu should not have been going for that red buff, but double lift over prioritizes farms and occasionally red buff right there. Those two deaths could cost them the game. Cloud9 still has Baron buff. They're pushing mid. There's one Nexus turret, and it's a 3v5. Ball's gonna look for the taunt, not gonna find it just yet for double lift. 35 seconds till Aphromoot is alive. For the mid lane, they go. One super minion left. The inhibitor gonna go back down, but there's no supers for a short time. The only Nexus turret stands. Balls goes for it. Damage comes in, looks for the taunt. Dexter into the back lines. He's gonna go for it here. Bit of damage comes through. Onto the Nexus, they go. Cloud9 going to ignore CLG a bit and go for the Nexus. Sneaky tries to stay alive. Use a Trinity Force Prox. Flashes, gets the kill. Meteos with the 50 gold for it. There goes the game. Cloud9. 43 minutes in. And a red buff steal ends up costing CLG the game in the end. Cloud9 was in control most of this game, but they had one hell of a time trying to close out CLG. They get the catch at the end, and they walk away with the victory now. They're 11th in a row. 11 in a row, two more in the next couple of days, and they tie their spring split record of 13 in the run. Of course, a hard-fought game. The handshakes come through. Man, I mean, that's just relief more than anything on their faces. That was a close one, you know? They started running into a wall of CLG. The Ziggs clear with the damage that Doublet was providing and the reliability of Aphromoo's peel and hooks was almost too much for Cloud9 to take down. But the superior organization by Cloud9 
never really faltering truly, getting the catch on a double it, and then having the headiness to close the game. Even the tricky little moves they had to secure yeah. the Baron, to make sure that CLG couldn't get it, then to make the Zigzalt be burned, then pushing down bottom. All those things were very smart by Cloud9. Yeah, and they had to play such a smart game. I mean, you look at the composition again, and they don't have the traditional hard engages you expect mm -hmm. to see. Like, I think back to yeah. Spring Split C9, where it's like Ken and Zach, these flankers who dive in and stun you up. They're once again playing the Karma support, yeah. like a, a supportive mid like Lulu, Kha'Zix. Again, not a hard engage jungler. And they kind of had to outposition CLG the whole time. The straight up battles didn't really work out. It was all about being tricky, and of course they did it. Things were really trending towards move speed here mm -hmm. for Cloud9. Uh, the Lulu, the Karma, even the Kha'Zix just running really fast and yeah. just trying to stay next to CLG. Uh, Lulu Waltz almost always burned aggressively in the team fights that they were able to win, yeah. getting them on a Kha'Zix and Shen and then taking out the CLG carries. Uh, but still, great game, 44 minutes of action. Yeah, absolutely massive. So uh, we do want to walk through some of the uh, post-game replays if we get yeah. the first one up here. This was uh, a pretty massive fight right here, all things considered. Yeah, this is where there was a danger of the game turning if we can just roll this one through. It's because there's the Baron buff on Cloud9 and they're trying to get a catch, but Double Lift uh, has other ideas right here. High goes in and the hook onto High blows him up instantly. That's where this fight really turned. Sneaky then as well gets pushed in. This was just how much damage the CLG team could put up if their carries weren't locked down by tanks. Every time Doublelift is actually hitting a squishy because Balls is already peeled back, you could see CLG's damage just unleashed. And then you get to see the other side of the story because it takes Doublelift three years to finish off Balls here. He actually has to burn his flash to secure the kill. Mm -hmm. uh, but that quadra kill on Doublelift had everyone thinking that CLG could turn this around. And it definitely scared Cloud9. Yeah, I mean, that is scary. You saw, like, both those kills, both the first two kills, I should say, yeah. set up by Aphromoo Hook. So I actually watched Delph the whole time and watched what he was doing. He sat there life-stealing yeah. until the hook came back up. And he's like, I caught yeah. Lemonation, went back in to secure the kills. And that's, I guess, the mark of, like, good AD carries. They actually wait for the setups. You don't always force it yourselves. And the whole team of CLG, of course, made those fights happen. Yeah, right there, the double lift Aphromoo lane was showing pretty strong. Yeah. But at the same time, you look at the the star players on Cloud9, like their best mm -hmm. in role. Balls again, amazing game on Shen. 5-1 and 11, I believe. 13. 5-1 uh, and 13 even, even better on Shen. You know, High, still just playing whatever, whatever. If Lulu yeah. gets through, he'll play it. If Soraka gets through, he'll play it. Yeah. <laughs> right, and Meteos, of course, always reliable on his top tier champions there with Kha'Zix. Yeah, and, and you saw actually, I think back to the beginning of Champs, like the bands come through, and I know we were thinking about it, and you saw Nian sitting there talking with his team saying, well, what do we pick here? There's so much on the table. Is it Lulu? Is it Kha'Zix? Is it the Shivana? Went for the Shivana, yeah. and you said, you said right, the top tier pick of Kha'Zix, how hard CLG racked their brains about what to go yeah. for. And of course, C9 got two really big picks for themselves. Yeah, still really close, and Yen didn't have the best game on Shivana. But you also got to wonder how much value would have CLG really gotten out of the Kazakhs or Lulu? Mm -hmm. Have to ask them. Yeah, maybe we'll see it in the playoffs or whatnot. Yeah. Of course, we're going to throw it over now to Riff and Kobe, who are joined by two members of the victorious Cloud9. Thank you very much, Freak. And fresh off their second win of the day, we want to welcome Cloud9's balls and hi to the desk, gentlemen. Congratulations again on the second win of the day. Hi, I gotta ask you, coming into this game, did, did you think that would be the end? Does it, did it actually catch you off guard that that's how it ended after such a hard-fought game? Well, the game kind of went weird because we had like two or three really big misplays where we kind of suicided and made the game much harder for ourselves. So I didn't really see us just... They, I don't know, obviously, I'm not going to see that game ends that way. So right. <laughs> it, it was really weird. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to how the game started then. Uh, coming into this, tell us about your team composition with all the shields that you guys are building up. Right, so we don't necessarily just, we, I, I didn't think about the shields really, I didn't really notice until you just said it, so, <laughs> but there, you just pick champions in order of priority, right? So we just picked what we thought was best at the time, so we just picked accordingly. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you priority or anything, <laughs> but, I mean, that's, that's how, what we did in champion select, and we were uh, taking what we prioritized and what they also prioritized, so it was kind of like a win-win situation. All right, Balls, can you talk a little bit about your Shen matchup with Shivana, because it seemed to go really well for you. Well, um, there's a lot of top lane uh, champs that were banned out. And uh, they first picked Shimana, so they gave us Kha'Zix Lulu for that. And uh, I had to choose another top lane champ to play. And that was pretty much Shen against Shimana. It was just pretty much a farm lane, and I was going to just ult at level 6 and help my teammates later. And yeah, there were some misplays, and I just got really fed off that. 
Interesting to see you go back to Shen, obviously because of the pick, but last uh, season we heard the team saying you had such a love-hate relationship with him. You'd play him for a few months and then just kind of forget about him, but obviously the love came back during this game. Looking at your picks now, talking about more picks before we jump into replays into this game, the Soraka, was that something that you had coming into the last few weeks, or has it kind of been something you've hold, held since the split started? Well, I, I get a lot of things from solo queue. So when Kirby kicking that mid Soraka guy, I believe, started spamming ah. Soraka, I lane versus it multiple times. I'm just like, what do I do in lane versus it? I, I can't do anything. And the only way to beat it was just camp with a jungler. And when you, need, when you have a champion that has to, the only way he loses is in a 1v2, it's just basically a really good champion. So I like her a lot, and I get inspiration from solo queue. So I give props to them. And then that one week Scar got a ban versus him every single game, I think. He wanted to bust it out. So I'll do it for him since he's not playing anymore. Right on. <laughs> The homage to Scar, I like it. Now, you did talk a little bit about your um, your guys' priorities in picks bands. You don't have to tell me what they are, but are they different from team to team? Like, say, if you're going against CLG, do you have the same list of priorities that you're looking at in Champion Select? It's different per team because different teams prioritize different things. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, TSM and, say, I guess, EG, they have completely different priorities on what champions they want. So depending on what team we go against, we have a different priority list for each team of what we want and what they want. So, Right on. So let's jump into the game now. The reason we have you guys here for the W, looking at the first replay about 24 minutes into the matchup. We're going to get that on your screen right now. Talk us a little bit of how you kind of took this back because it was CLG brute forcing you, and then you knew when to turn onto the pocket they were sitting in. Okay, so they're trying super hard to force down this turret here, which isn't necessarily a bad idea, but they're in a bad position. Me and Kaz is coming from the side, and Double Buff is too far up right now. He's, he, ha he has to be the one to hit the turret, though, because mm -hmm. he's the AD carry, but that puts him in a bad spot, and we basically get both our frontline champions to jump on him. Balls gets in, gets a taunt, and they're all in a bad spot right now. So Corky's like untouched by the rest of their champions, and those three just die to us three, and they basically force the turret too hard. And something like that, how quick do you formulate that you are able to do that and that it will work out in your favor? Is it a few steps ahead or does it have to happen in that second? Well, the moment they started pushing mid and I was bottom, I was like, hey, we can fight this. They're in a bad spot. So that's where I start charging over from bottom. I tell Kha'Zix to come in the same side as me. Balls is ready to ultimate. And we basically would force a fight from there. When you're running a team with a lot of ultis that are very defensive, like Shen and Lulu, do you guys have to coordinate amongst yourselves Who's going to use your, each other's ultimate when, or is it just reactive? I think it's a lot of reactive because uh, you can't just tell someone all, all the time when to just ult. Like right now, mm -hmm. you have to be watching. Like, I have to watch my teammates uh, and when to go in, and then I also communicate with them and tell me when to go in too. And they also yell out, so it's a lot of preparation. Right on. We'll get right into the second replay, actually. This one at about 30 minutes into the game. CLG was pushing quite, or you guys, I should say, were pushing quite hard. And you get chased out of this one. And it really looked like CLG was able to gain some, gain some big ground here. What was the idea with having some uh, advantage in this? Okay, so there was a really big misplay here by me. It was my fault. I saw Shivana pushing mid, and I thought it was only Shivana. So I was like, hey, it doesn't matter. She was pushing against Super Creeps by herself. Just push pot. But then they sent the other two mid. I didn't see that in time. So they basically got an inhibitor for free, which shouldn't have happened. So they're like super far behind right now, but they get a free inhibitor. Just mm -hmm. because they have a good rotation, they said, hey, screw it, push down through mid, let them push bottom, whatever. So they had a good rotation, and we got punished for that, giving them a free inhib. And this fight would have went better, but I believe me and Lemon suicide to Nian over here, where he like E flashes over the wall and kills us both. So in the case we didn't get double killed here, that, that would have went much better for us. But the fact that Nian played that well and killed us kind of made that a giant advantage for them. Even though we got more kills, they got a free inhibitor when they shouldn't have. And you guys say, obviously, you don't communicate that more mis mistakes were made, but how do you quickly just kind of get back from a scratch like that on the play? Well, you, when you're in a game, you never hindsight something. So, like, if someone does a stupid dive, you do not call that guy out. You don't say anything bad. You make a bad play, whatever. Just move on from it. That's the pass. So when that happened, we're just like, all right, whatever. Just moving on. What's the next thing we do? What's next? Just make plans for our head. Very strong play, obviously, coming out. That win is huge for you guys, but obviously you look forward to tomorrow. Team Solo Mid, one of the, the teams you scrim against more than not. What are you guys feeling coming to this game, Pauls? Well, um, pretty much just a farm lane, top lane for me. <laughs> not, not much new, I guess. But it's going to be like overall solid play that we have to make. And hi. Well, 
Landing against Bjergsen, all that guy wants to do is win his lane. That's his sole goal in the entire game. He wants to win his lane, he's gonna try and kill you, and he's gonna try and carry. The last time we played against each other, I think I was Zed versus a Blanc. Mm. It didn't necessarily go in his favor, but it didn't go in my favor either. So this time around, hopefully either I can kill him or just not let him play his way. So. Last week, um, TSM didn't seem to be performing as usual. A little bit weak, even though they were coming out with wins. Have you guys scrimmed them um, maybe since then? And do they still look a little bit weak? Do you guys think you have a, a good chance at this? Or, or do they look back and forth? We haven't scrimmed any team that we play during Super Week. So yeah. the three teams that we don't play, we've been scrimming them. We've been scrimming LMQ. So obviously, we're not going to scrim TSM, CLG, XCG, and Coast just because we play them this weekend. So I have no idea what they've been doing. So coming into this season, let's talk about stats a little bit. Uh, not to put you in the hot seat, but you are one of the lower farmers in the mid lane, but that's because you roam. Is it kind of on your mind that you are behind in farm usually, so you have to make up in other places when you're playing that spot? I don't really care for what my stats show. I, I play to win this game. I don't necessarily play to win the lane. And I do a lot of things that aren't really selfish. Like, a lot of people like give Mido's crap for taking my blue bluff. It's not <laughs> mine. He can take it if he wants. It just depends on who can make more out of it. Mm -hmm. And if me farming mid versus me diving bottom, whatever one's more important, I'll go do that one. So all I want to do is win the game. I don't care for all... Well, that'd be cool to go all stars, but <laughs> I don't care to be a, like, a star or anything. I just want to win the game, and that's all that's important to me. Right on. And ball's in the top lane. What's it kind of feel to be headhunted as the one that's always going to be that guy in top lane? Even Dyrus is saying 80% of the time you're the one to come out on top. What's that kind of do playing on your mind in a game? I mean, it feels good knowing that like everyone thinks of me highly, but I think I just, uh, I'm just playing well, and there's not really much to do when all I see is red creeps and farm them all, <laughs> and my team lets me do that, so it makes my CS look high, but... It's pretty much just team play, like whoever gets a gold is divided between the teams and other teams prioritize gold higher on other players than other teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I get a lot of farm compared to sneaking high most times just because I see red creeps in farm. All right, we have a little bit of extra time yeah. here, so I'm sure people are very interested in your rumble. Do you have any advice for people who are trying to pick up rumble because of maybe this new uh, skin that's coming out? <laughs> well, first of all, it's pretty hard to farm with Rumble because uh -huh. of his Flame Splitter. So you have to play a Rumble a lot and get used to the timing of flash hitting with his Flame Splitter on or also turning it around. But there's also a lot of stuff like, depending on your lane matchup and the junglers, you have to decide when to like push a lane or farm, I guess. And uh, most of the time on Rumble, I start Flame Splitter and try to like win my lane. But in solo queue, it's pretty hard when they just gank you right away. So... <laughs> All right, hi, final question. I know last year, Jack would always take you guys out on the wins for pizza and good food, some boiling crab. What's on the night of a Super Week? What are you guys going to do after a victory now? I think I'm going to go home and take a nap. Like, <laughs> I, it's, it's going to be eating and sleeping just because I, I do want to play solo queue, but it's on patch 4.5 right now, mm -hmm. and that messes entirely with my damage values. People are going different runes. I'm going different runes. Interesting. So if I did that, I wouldn't be used to it. So like, say I kill someone at level 3, in solo queue, I try to do that tomorrow, it's not going to be the same, just because runes are different. So I would like to play solo queue, but I cannot. So I'm just going to sleep and eat. All right, because I'd be looking to call you out on that level three all in. Yeah. <laughs> but congratulations on the win, guys. Best of luck in more wins in the season and against Team Solo Mid tomorrow. Best of luck to both of the teams. All right, everyone, we've got to take a quick break. But when we come back, Dignitas will face off against Curse in our fourth game of the day. It's Super Week. The NALCS continues after this. On the backside, Vintra's gonna go down. There go. Well, Mido the generally jumps on in. Big tank there. Still there, double flow. He goes down to high. Ball's still going down. Finds after double kill, triple kill now. As more people fall over, mass kills with C9.